Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a quick recap with photos offset to the side of 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, Season 4, Episode 13, entitled Pleasure Principle. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> Jeffrey is going back home and he's ignoring all of Arya's texts after she declined his marriage proposal and she's saying I'm sorry I didn't want it to end this way but he feels that he needs to ignore them and that's a close chapter and he's moving on he's fed up with everything and he's ready to just forget all about her he updates his sons about everything that happened even the proposal and her declining the proposal and they feel really bad for him and he's just ready to go home Home, forget it and move on Tom then speaks with his friend Hammond and he wants to update him about his social life and he tells him about Darcy and how after everything he tried to meet up with her and tell her how he felt through a letter but she wasn't trying to hear that and he wants to move on and his friend Ham says maybe this is karma you got a taste of of your own medicine and maybe that's something you needed to slam that door in your face it seems pretty interesting maybe that's something you should think about and Tom tells him yeah you know I'm going to Toronto now to meet someone that I think that we click and we're we're gonna start those next steps and Hammond is telling him look you're getting to a certain age. You're not going to look the same forever. You're feeling some sort of way because you're dealing with different women and you have your pick pretty much. But just remember, time is of the essence and you can't keep playing games with women. And Tom does recognize that there is some truth in those statements. And he says, yes, I do realize that now it's time for me to move on. And I've learned my lesson. And I honestly feel that he felt the bite from Darcy when he couldn't get his way. Lisa is calling back to the States because she needs her divorce decree. Because last time when they inquired about getting married, they couldn't get married because they needed a copy of this documentation to move on. Eventually, the employee tells her to hang on a second and let me review this information to see if we can get it to you in Nigeria since you're pressed for time. They then learn that the employee is able to send her the documentation via email. So, of course, they're excited about it, that they ha they'll have the documentation at their fingertips. They don't have to worry about it being mailed or rushed over. So they try to move on with that situation. Later on that evening, Lisa confronts Usman about messages that she found on his phone. She claims that she was trying to get some Wi-Fi information from his phone, but just quote unquote came across these messages on his phone. And she tells him that, hey, you're playing games with me. I saw this text message that you were having with another woman saying, hello, love, and I love you. And what is this? And you can't deny it because I took a screenshot with my phone from your phone. So tell me what is up with that. If you can't tell me what is going on, we might as well end this and I don't want to be with you. And Usman says that there's just a friend that means nothing. It's a fan and it wasn't that much to say, hey, I love you back and hello, love and all of that. And it's not what she thinks it is. And in typical Lisa fashion, she walks away, curses him out, and says, it's over, F you, I'm older than you, I've played the game long enough, if you think you're going to get over on me, this is effed up, there's not going to be a wedding. Darcy and her daughters, they have a moment to, sh to chat and just reflect about the things that she's been through. They have their little ladies night and put on some masks and, and facial creams and everything just to moisturize and to have a good time. And the daughters just say, hey, we just want you to be happy. The number one thing you should be focused on right now is making sure that you're happy and you're taking care of yourself. Please take a moment to do that. And I thought that was really mature for her daughters to say that because it's something that she really, really does, does need. She needs to get herself right and not go to relationship to relationship so quickly. 
Tom gets ready to leave New York and go to Toronto. And he wishes Darcy the best. And he states that this is the last chapter. The chapter is closed. Him and Darcy are 100% done and he feels that Shannon in Toronto is his big next step. Ash and Avery talk and she's saying that you know after I spoke with Sion she didn't mention that it hurt her when it was mentioned that her son has the possibility to go to the states for a long time but in actuality she expressed that it really hurt her but you made it seem to me as if she was okay with it and didn't have any issues with it but that's hard to believe because she's a mother and from those conversations I had with her she confirmed everything why did you change that statement and make it seem as if she didn't have a problem with it and Ash explains to her that that's her that, those were her initial thoughts that she would be okay with it but she did say something different later on so that is really what happened and she also asked him is that she also says that he failed to mention that their divorce wasn't final and you guys didn't didn't file for it but a year ago and you know and your ex-wife confirmed that to me but why do you feel like there's something that you couldn't tell tell me this is the stuff that frustrates me you claim it's not a big deal and that you tell me everything but when you don't it seems as if you're hiding things all I want is for you to tell me the truth and Ash says I'm sorry at the time I did not think that it was a big issue we weren't in a hurry to get a divorce we weren't pressed for time um we were separated and I just didn't think it was anything I was hiding from you. I, I really thought that I was being honest. And Avery says, okay. And then they try to move forward. Yolanda is still in denial about Williams. Even after the reverse Google search. Even after her kids say, hey, that threatening email is this person that you're speaking to and they're upset that they've been found out. Even when you ask that person if they're from Nigeria, that they were from Nigeria and they still uh, just were kind of really conflicted about everything about this Williams person. Yolanda is still adamant about meeting this person and she still wants to see this person. And I'm just so confused about it. And I'm really starting to think that Yolanda is a staged actress i'm really starting up to believe that a lot of these individuals in the episode are staged actresses and actors but i'll get into that a little later ed says that he wants to go back and check on rosa but when he gets back to the hotel room he notices that she is gone and reality hits him that rose is done with all of his excuses all of his accusations all of his demands just the lies everything she is gone and it hits ed hard and this is the reality dose that he's always needed so Stephanie feels before she leaves that she needs to speak with Erica one more time and Erica agrees to meet up with Stephanie. But we can tell from her body language and her demeanor that she's just ready to get this meeting over with and whatever Stephanie has to say, let her say it and maybe she needs closure. But yeah, Erica still feels hurt and she's asking her that why did you make certain issues a big deal when we already discussed them in the past and we already discussed them when you arrived i'm trying to figure out why you got so upset about those things stephanie says that she came to realize that she has her jealousy issues she has her insecurities and she's just sorry about it all and upset that it had to end that way and erica says you know i hope you get through whatever you need to get through i hope you get through life and coming out to your family i'm just done i'm sick of the energy i'm sick of the arguing it's just continuously the same thing over and over again i wish you well they end it stephanie walks off and of course erica is still upset and confused about why stephanie even wasted her time david and lana pick up where we left off and of course david was really really excited but Lana seemed to be kind of uncomfortable as she's hugging him, kind of like, hey, how you doing? 
kind of thing. There isn't this I'm in love with you hug. It was more like a hug, like we finally met up. Here you go. And I hope you're happy with this hug. But the curve of the episode, we see that 24 hours earlier, production spent some time with Lana. We learned that production knew all along that Lana was a real person. And Lana was aware that David was in town all of those days. She blames it on other endeavors that kept her from meeting up with David. And she never gets specific on how she met David. She claims that she met him through a dating site and they just kind of clicked based upon a picture that she saw. And it kind of boggles me into thinking Is she an actress or is this a real situation? Because we've heard online and with a few other posts that this person in real life is an actress. So it really kind of has me skeptical if this entire situation is staged. Let me know with what you think. She then goes on to say how she loves makeup and she loves to model. And when she gets to America, she can't wait to try and do different things. When production asked her what are some of the things that she was attracted to or what are some of the things that she loves David um, for, and she really doesn't give an answer. She doesn't get an answer on why, why she's interested in this person. So it's quite evident that if she is interested in David it's for her own personal gains she gets a call from a friend and the friend asked her about someone that she's met and if it was somebody that she met on the chat the chat that she gets paid to be on and to talk to other people and the friend doesn't ask this person that you met are they nice or what is it that you like about their personality what are some things that are great no the friend asked how old is he and is he wealthy and Lana has no problem with saying that yes he's very very um she's paid quite well which is another red flag she can never say what her true intentions are with David but it's very evident that she's in a hurry to go to Vegas and that she even looked up online Vegas is a place where people go there to get married very quickly Jeffrey gets married gets ready on uh for a date and it's this mystery woman who we eventually learn is mary and mary is dressed up and they're having dinner and they're talking and mary does express that she was fully aware about the proposal that he gave and that she turned him down and jeffrey seems like he's just so ready to move on with mary and this is interesting to me because wow you just proposed to someone days or even a day later and you're so ready to move on i hope that mary doesn't fall into this default relationship as if you're the only thing that's left in his category and he's just picking you that's what it seems like it seems like jeffrey is in such in a rush to be in a relationship and such in a rush to have somebody be with him and possibly marry But Mary explains to production that they've known each other for years. This isn't some overnight thing. And she doesn't have any problem knowing that he proposed to another woman. And she always knew that there was something between the two. But is happy that he's making the movements to turn us into something real. And that's what Jeffrey wants. He asks her, is she seeing anybody else? Is she in a relationship? And would she feel comfortable moving into a relationship status with him? She agrees, and they move forward with the whole thing. Ash, Avery, and his son, Taj, they meet up because they want to spend some time in a local park and share some bonding time and play with the ducks and look at the ducks. They start talking about fun times. Ash shares a funny story where he was at the lake and he was feeding the ducks. And as he was doing it, he looked over and he saw a sign saying, please don't feed the ducks. So he thought that was really, really funny. And Avery teaches him, his son, how to skip rocks. So they're having a moment. As they're having a moment, Avery realizes that, wow, I feel very uncomfortable seeing the bond that they have of Ash and Tosh being away from each other. I can't imagine that. And even as a mom, I can't imagine my child being in far across the seas, far, far away at such a delicate age. And Avery tells production that I can't do that. 
it's very heartbreaking to think at such a delicate age that he is that his mother would be he would be away from his mother and away from his father for long periods of time after they leave ash and avery talk and she tells him what i think makes the most sense is that if we see each other that is incrementally that we agree on so many months here so many months there because our children are at very delicate age delicate ages and they need us and Ash thinks that's a very good idea. So all we can do is just hope for the best so far and see where their relationship goes. Erica updates her mom in telling her that it didn't work out. Um, they split up and Stephanie had her ways that she didn't agree with. It didn't make me happy. I didn't like it. And it just took me out of character or who I was. And also, it was always in the back of my mind that she'll never tell her family. She'll never come out. And... I don't want to be a secret. And her mother tells her, follow your heart. If you didn't feel like there was anything there, if you felt like there were issues, go with that. Understand if you need to move on, if she needs to move on, that's fine. Just know that I'm going to be here as your mother. And only as a mother could gives her a very endearing hug that Erica needed. Jeffrey updates his sons about what's been going on and says that he's been dating Mary. Initially, the sons have a body language like they're sick of the back and forth of his relationship issues, but that's not the case. They tell him that, hey, it's kind of funny that now we know who you've been sneaking off to go see. We want you to be happy. And then on top of that, we just want what's best for you. Just keep pressing forward and do whatever makes you happy. We just don't want to see our dad hurt. We want to see you having fun and enjoying life. And Jeffrey says, yes, that's where I am in my life. I thought that proposing to her in Russia would be the final thing and we could move on. But it didn't work out that way. And I'm just ready to be in a relationship. I'm just ready to be loved. We then see Varya. She's prepped and prepared to go to America. She's telling production that she's been sending messages to him and he's been ignoring her, but he she wants to let him know that she's made a mistake. She wants him to propose to her again and she's going to America to get her man. She only booked a hotel for one night to rest and she knows that he'll let her stay at his house. They'll get to know each other even deeper. He'll propose again. She'll say yes and she knows that He'll be very, very happy to see her. And she wants to apologize and start over. When she gets to America, she goes to the air from the airport and gets a taxi. And while they're on the way to Jeffrey House, she says, Wow, he lives in the country neighborhood and needs to be closer to the city. And <laughs> as Jeffrey's mother described that after a while, she predicted that. She would get tired of the country life, so that's a red flag for Jeffrey. I hope that he knows that whatever he decides to do, I hope he sees that footage. But she wants to move forward, and she's happy, and she's looking past that. She's just trying to hurry up and get to his house. Lisa and Usman, after the typical Lisa fashion of her running up and running off, of course, her threatening to leave and end the proposal and the, the, the future marriage, Usman goes after her, gets her, calms her down after, after she's cursed him out 50,000 times. And he says, look, that person is a friend. That person is a fan of mine. They always send me these messages and me saying that, hey, love and all of that doesn't mean that I love her. And if I'm in the industry, you need to understand that that's just the talk that goes on. There's nothing else happening. That's it. And Lisa, she was really not feeling it. But she says, look, I'm older than you. I played the game longer than you. You need to make sure that you block this person and everything's taken care of before we get married. We then see David and he feels that now that he's seen Lana, that he's really, really excited. And this is the new chapter of his life. But after several hugs to Lana, you could tell that she's not into him. And he's giving her hugs, but her arms are to her sides. And she's not grasping him the same way as when they first met up. Varya arrives to Jeffrey's house. She knocks on the door. And when he opens it, he seems surprised as in, wow, what are you doing here? And not, oh my goodness, I'm happy to see you. And she's hugging him and telling him, hi, did you miss me? And 
Jeffrey doesn't look excited to see her, and neither does Mary. And that's the end of the episode. Now I'll go into why my feelings are starting to change about this show. I really feel that the Lana situation was staged because it just seems really awkward that wow production knew this whole time that she existed you know that she's healthy you know that everything's fine and you're letting this man go on this wild goose chase to find her i just think that's not only cruel but staged and really really fake um and also with Vaya's situation how she claimed that earlier in the previous episodes how she didn't have money to just throw away and just to show up to America and to take that trip neither can she drop what she's doing to make that trip and she does say that it's been two or three weeks since they spoke but how would her situation change in two or three weeks and also when she arrives to Jeffrey's house the dogs don't seem as if they don't recognize her and in other words as if they haven't practiced the scene over and over again, how she'll show up. And it sounds like Jeffrey is mic'd. It sounds like Mary is mic'd up to film. And if it was a surprise, why would they be mic'd already? It just seems really, really staged. And how, wow, really? Out of all the days she could have shown up, Mary was over there? Hmm just doesn't seem realistic to me and it just doesn't seem as if for it to be her first time to America she looked really relaxed and calm and didn't seem oh wow look at this look at that oh look at this scenery look at that it just didn't seem eh. and I'm really starting to think a lot of I know it's reality okay I know that they have to do certain shots and certain things over and over again for the production but certain situations don't seem genuine you can really tell a person's initial reaction to things and unfortunately i'm starting to sense a lot of scripted situations and it's really making me turn my nose away like mm, i don't know if they're doing this to boost even more ratings because the show gets more and more popular daily because people start to learn about the show but the thing that really had me thinking that this was staged was the jeffrey situation because it's such a coincidence that mary was there chilling at the house when she showed up coming all the way from russia hmm let me know what you think i could be completely wrong i don't know let me know what you think subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and also follow me on instagram at the same profile official bun underscore e until next time bye